Yo, 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 yo. Welcome everybody. My name is Steph. So in this video, what is the best laptop for developers in 2022? I'm recording this in June, 2022. I use all operating system. Well, I have used. I use Mac, I use Windows, I've used lots of Linux, Android, iOS, so pretty much all the major ones. I don't know if there's any others, but anyway, those are the operating systems I have used. On a day-to-day -day basis, I tend to use Mac OS because I find it to be more stable, less updates, and I just prefer it overall. If Windows didn't update every two minutes, then I would maybe be leaning a little bit more towards Windows. Whether you go for a Windows laptop or a Mac laptop, it doesn't matter. They're all really, really good. You can find great computers in Windows, great computers in Mac. With Mac, you have built-in command line because at the end of the day, a Mac computer is a Unix-based system. And most web servers out there today are Unix-based. Not all. Some people run Windows-based servers. But most used today are some variant of Linux, which is Unix. So if you're interested in doing command line stuff, it's all built into the Mac operating system, although it's not hard, it's not a big deal to install it on Windows. So that being said, my personal preference overall in terms of what I think the best laptop for 2022 is the MacBook Air, which is the entry level laptop for Mac OS, for Apple rather, well, Mac OS. It's the entry level tech laptop, it's their cheapest. So this is the 2019 macbook air um i bought in 2019 so it has uh this has 16 gigs of ram which is i think is a minimum you should have 16 gigs of ram so just in case you're going to get into virtual machines and so on which you might use in development it also has uh an ssd hard drive that's one of the reasons why it's so thin uh it has an ssd hard drive I have 512 gig. Again, these are two minimums. Whatever computer you get, whether it be Mac or Windows, make sure it has at least 16 gigs of RAM, although MacBooks with the M technology, M1 and 2, 2 just came out, uh, they're much more efficient in terms of the RAM utilization, but either case, 16 gig minimum, and I would go minimum 500 gigabytes for your onboard hard drive space. That said, you could probably get along just fine with 256, because remember, when you're writing code, it's just text, right? So text doesn't take up much space. But, you know, spend the extra 100 bucks, 200 bucks, if you can, and get the extra, uh, go from the 256 to the 500 megabyte uh, uh, SSD, solid state drive hard drive. Why solid state hard drive? Because it's super fast, much performant than the traditional uh, this hard drive, what are, what are they I forget all of a sudden what they're called. I haven't used them in years now. But SSD is the now and the future of hard drives because they're just so much faster. And you have to understand, when you're using a computer, you're opening files, closing files, opening apps, closing apps, etc., which you're doing constantly, uh, your SSD drive is the bottleneck. That's where the speed comes in. So, And, and of course, because of the way Apple has a totally integrated hardware and software uh, system from top to bottom, their SSDs tend to be blazing fast, blazing fast. So as I said, this is the 2019 model of the MacBook Air, superb computer. It lasts forever, battery power is amazing, great, fantastic for development. I'm able to edit 4K video on this, so you can definitely code on this, no problem. Now, this is a great computer. You could probably get this, I think you can get this for about $100, $200 cheaper than the newer model. But if you can squeeze that extra bit of money out, a few less beers, don't go to McDonald's so much, this, get the newest version, which will be out, I think, in about 30 days from when I'm recording this in June 7th to 2020. The M12 is significantly faster, better screen. They got a MagSafe thing going on, which is their power supply that just pops off via magnet so you don't pull your computer all over the place. And the same great battery life. This has extended battery life. I've, you know, if you, this, I think you can play movies for 18 hours on this. It's crazy how long the battery life lasts on the MacBook Air. So yeah, MacBook Air is my recommended pro laptop for software development. That said, Windows can get great laptops as well. Windows is great for coding. 
It's a personal preference. This is my preference overall. Um, you're going to pay less. You can get a much cheaper laptop in the Windows world and still be fantastic. If you had a four or five year old laptop, it would be more than enough to learn and to code with professionally. No problem. This is a 2019. It's so it's a two years old now and it's still plenty fast. And I don't think I'll upgrade because it's, it's fantastic. Why do I get a super small laptop, super thin laptop for, for a coding? Uh, because it's portable and it's super portable. So for travel, to go from this, uh, this is I think a 13 inch screen to a 15, this smaller form factor is just so much easier to travel with. Um, so that's why I, I go with this particular laptop size. Last point. So you're going to look at, again, let me go back, Windows. Yes, yeah, Windows laptops, you can get them for far cheaper. But they're not going to be as nice as this. And uh, here's the other final point. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. There's some really nice Windows laptops too. But anyway, I'm just a fan of Mac OS. But again, let me emphasize, any operating, any operating system is fine. I would not go with Chromebooks. Not, there's, not that there's anything wrong with them per se, but it's just that the Chrome OS is not the easiest, I would imagine, to work with for software development. It lacks certain things, and you probably have to jump through a bunch of hoops. Uh, although you can get Chromebooks for 200 bucks. Um, you probably get some Windows laptops for 300 bucks, 400 bucks. So that's what you can afford. Get that. You'll be able to write the best apps in the world with those type of laptops. But if you can afford it, here's the thing. So this is going to be a little bit more expensive than some Windows laptops. But you get a lot of power. Uh, you get a lot of uh, portability, a lot of battery life, etc., etc. But here's the thing that people don't talk about enough. Mac equipment have a very high resale value. So you could walk into the Mac store two years from now, boop, and as long as you didn't scratch it up, um, oops, as long as you don't scrap it up, scratch it up, you'll probably get at least 30% of your money back from Apple, right? So they're going to come. I've done it a few times where you bring in your laptop or you bring in your iPad or whatever, and you go, okay, they look at it, they check it, make sure there's no scratches, no big marks, and based on the condition, they give you X dollars. So I remember I returned... I think it was like a three or four year old laptop. And I got like 30, 40% of what I paid. So you have to, whatever you pay this for, knock off 25%, just to be safe. So you knock off 25%. And then that is applied to credit towards your next purchase. It could be 35%, who knows. And that's selling right to Apple with no headaches. Now, if you go on the second secondhand market, like any high end items, there's a very uh, strong uh, resale value to this so you can, go on uh, whatever Kijiji or uh, Craigslist or uh, eBay and you probably get some pretty even more money from a, a second-hand buyer. Why? Because these computers will last for years and years and years. This computer because it's SSD, because it's got 250, 256 gig of RAM, because it's a pretty big hard drive, this will probably be good for another five years if really you know I don't really it's so fast still. Anyhow that's my recommendation for 2022. My top pick for a developer's laptop is the MacBook Air, Apple's entry-level computer. My second, and on Windows side, I'd probably go with Lenovo. Lenovo has really wicked good keyboards. They've always been good with their keyboards. I don't look at Lenovo recently, but Lenovo ThinkPads or in that area might be something to look at. Uh, don't use iPads. If you want to be a full-time developer, I wouldn't use iPad. I don't think it's there yet. It's not because of the device, the power, the device is it's in of itself in terms of the hardware, super powerful. But it just uh, iPad OS is not. I don't think it's there yet to be a developer yet. It, of all the things you have to do, who knows what the latest update coming out in the next uh, couple months? But stick to laptops, not iPads, not yet anyway. 